Hello and welcome to our video. My name is Chaitan and you're watching the Joom Dev YouTube channel. In this video, we'll talk about the what's of the web page test. The web page test is a very popular uh, speed testing tool that a lot of websites use for uh, a lot of users use for testing the performance of their website. And we'll, we'll, in this video, we'll talk about the what these numbers means and uh, really what what each of these you know numbers mean. We won't go, get into details of hows or how to get straight A's and how to get all green, but really really just talk about what these numbers mean and what are really the factors affecting or impacting these numbers. Uh, so I just ran this test a few minutes ago for our website, joomdev.com, and you can see we have a F, we have a A, we have a A, we have a A, we have a D on this one, and then this is checked, which means it's it's an A. So it's really a true or false statement. Let's talk about the first byte time, okay? And we can click on the uh, you know these and get more details, but here's what it says. So in the first byte we got 700, and this was the actual time, which is 1.3 seconds. The expected time was 383 uh, milliseconds, which is 0.3 seconds. The first byte time is the minute the request is sent to the browser. So let's say you're opening up a website and you type in a URL. How soon before the web server actually starts returning data? Okay, so this first byte time is really dependent on your web server and the extensions and the plugins you're using on your website. So there, there, there are two points here. Uh, one is to have a faster web server if your web hosting is slow or does not have enough RAM or does not run on the latest technology. That could slow this number up and you know you could see a, 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 you know two seconds to first byte and three seconds to first byte or something like that. Or if your web server is fast enough, but you have a lot of extensions, that means the web server has to process a lot of code before returning the data to the browser. That could also take a lot of time. So those are the two main factors that impact your first byte time. So when your first byte time is low, remember to make sure you have a good web hosting and a faster, let's say, uh, you know, not, not a lot of extensions, if I may. So only keep the extensions and plugins you need on your website. Now, the second one is keep alive enabled. Now, this is something very simple and most of the web hosting providers support it. You can easily do this by adding a simple one, one or two lines in your HT access file. And I found this uh, you know, very good do uh, tutorial documenting this on this website called wherewe.com or something. Uh, this is how it looks. If you have Keep in Alive enabled, it's gonna work like this. So uh, when the browser is requesting material to from your website, it's going to load that material in one connection. So first comes the HTML file, then comes the CSS file, the JS file, or whatever order your files are in. If Keep Alive is not enabled, then the browser is going to create a new connection for every file to the server, which is going to uh, you know waste a lot of time. And from this tutorial, again, we're not going to go into the house, but it looks like you can just insert this following line in your HD access file, and that should enable it, assuming your web server, Apache, or whatever app server you're using is configured to do that. All right, next one is compressed transfer. Again, we have ACE on this one. And compressed transfer is really the data that's being transferred from the web server to the website must be in, in a format that it can be compressed. The normal compression that Joomla uses or web server uses it is gzip. And in the Joomla configuration, you have an option to do that. You can also do it by adding some code to your HD access file, or if your web server supports it by default, then it would do it anyway, whether or not you enable it. But again, it's again, something on your web server level. Compress images. Now, this this is an important one. Uh, a lot of people oversee it and then you know end up not worrying about it. And then this images is uh, something 
that takes a lot of space you know when it comes to you know transfer uh, transferring resources from your website images are really the most heavy element one image can be probably a megabyte and that's the size of all the html and css and javascript combined on your website so you got to have your images optimized and compressed and uh, the way this compression works is you got to make sure if your image is a JPG, you know, try to use JPG images unless you use transparent images for, for which you use PNGs. And if you're using JPG images, make sure they're compressed. There are tools online that allows you to do that and you can easily compress them. And second one obviously is using progressive JPEGs. That means uh, progressive JPEGs are really the images that load... You know, first it loads kind of blurred version. Facebook uses this. So first it loads kind of a blurred version of the image. And then when it has more resources, you know, and then it slowly clears the image rather than, you know, from top to bottom, like you'd normally see when a high resolution image is loading. I hope that one's clear. Uh, cache static content. So static content is the CSS, the images, the JavaScript, all right? Anything that's a resource that's not part of HTML, well, I mean, not part of HTML, but that's pointing to an a, a external file is your static resources, okay? And since these resources are not updated that often, these resources must be cached. So you can see right now, our resources are 24 hours, which, uh, so, which means we are instructing the browser to, you know, fetch these resources every 24 hours, which if, from what I can see, it looks like is not enough. So what you can do in this case is insert some code in your HT access file, which will make sure that these resources are cached by the browser. So when the user is visiting from one page to the second page on the website, the, the web browser will not re-request that file and will only use the local cached copy, hence making the user experience better, hence making the website speed faster. And that's why, you know, you can see the first time, uh, first view is seven seconds, but the second view is really five seconds because some of the resources were cached. So it was faster to load in the second time. The last one is CDN. This is Content Delivery Network. We use Cloudflare and you can too. It's a free service uh, unless you, you know, want to get advanced security features and, and all of that. And it helps you, again, DDoS attacks and everything. But at the same time, it's provides, it provides you with a content delivery network for your website as well. A content delivery network in a nutshell is making your website resources physically closer to the user. So let's say if a user from, let's say your website is in America and you're a user from Australia is opening up your website. There's some sort of latency or lag time between that transfer. And the content delivery network, what it does is it physically moves those files through their network nearer to that user. So, you know, if the user is from Australia, they, the content delivery network may have a data center in Sydney and they'll move your files near to the user, hence the files will load faster and quicker. And, you know, that, that, that works really well. So those are the six things. And, you know, we'll, we'll have more videos on how to optimize these numbers and get straight A's. But this is really the explanation of why, what these numbers are and why they matter. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe to our channel.